So there are about 11 different classes of drugs that are available for treatment of diabetes. Both the ADA and the ACE uh, guidelines for managing diabetes focus on the use of a subset of those drugs, metformin, sulfonylureas, the SGLT2 inhibitors, DPP4 uh, inhibitors, the GLP-1 receptor activators, the thiazolidine diodes. The, uh, the other drug that's commonly used and which is included in both of the algorithms is insulin itself. And so the question is, how does one use these drugs in treating the individual with diabetes? The ADA algorithm, at its simplest level, and, and this is really a simplification because if one reads the actual text, one sees that both of these documents show a lot of understanding of the complexities of diabetes care. But the ADA algorithm suggests start with metformin and then essentially there's no specific guidance given to whether to use insulin, sulfonylureas, thiazolidine diones, GLP-1 receptor activators, DPP-4 inhibitors, or uh, the GLP-1 or the SGLT-2 inhibitors. Now, that's a little bit of an oversimplification because the ADA guideline does say that if cost is an issue, one should use the less expensive drugs such as the NPH insulin or the sulfonylureas. If um, uh, hypoglycemia is an issue, one should avoid those drugs and rather use the other drugs in the class, uh, in the classification scheme. In contrast, though, the ACE algorithm comes out and says, here's the drugs that we think of as most effective, and then here's how they should be used. And so the ACE algorithm has suggested, yes, starting with metformin is reasonable, it's economical, it's effective, it's not associated with hypoglycemia, it's not associated with weight gain. But then, in add-on, one should strongly consider three classes of drugs as probably appearing best in the current time. The DPP-4 inhibitors perhaps are least effective in the ACE algorithm um, because of their lesser effect in lowering blood sugar. However, they're recognized to be the best tolerated of the drugs with essentially no side effects in the vast, vast majority of individuals. The SGLT2 inhibitors are considered quite potent. They are more, important, more potent than the DPP-4 inhibitors, particularly with individuals who have greater degrees of hyperglycemia, let's say an A1C above 8% when they're already on metformin. Um, they have, though, some side effects. They cause urinary frequency. In certain individuals, uh, genital tract or urinary tract infections are seen. There may be risk in some individuals of dehydration, although this doesn't seem to be a major problem. And then there are the GLP-1 receptor agonists, which are probably the most potent drugs we have for lowering the blood sugar they, like the DPP-4 inhibitors and SGLT2 inhibitors, are not intrinsically associated with hypoglycemia, clearly very desirable. They, like the SGLT2 inhibitors, are associated with some degree of weight loss, and especially with the longer-acting GLP-1 receptor activators, these drugs give the most potent degree of glucose lowering, and so they've been shown to be essentially equally potent or even a bit more potent to a single dose of insulin glargine in controlling glycemia.